video we will compare the features of mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation. We will compare their differences in the examination finding, their pathology, clinical features, differences in the EKG finding and the x-ray chest findings of the two conditions. The features of the mitral stenosis are printed in red color and the features of the mitral regurgitation are printed in a blue color. So let's begin the difference with the clinical examination. The differences in the neck veins appearance in the mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation. In the mitral stenosis, A wave is due to vigorous right atrial systole because of pulmonary hypertension associated with tricuspid stenosis. And the wide descent in mitral stenosis is due to gradual pressure decline after mitral valve opening. So the two waves that appears in the mitral stenosis are A wave and Y wave. Whereas in mitral regurgitation we have V wave and a Y descent. V wave may be different in acute and chronic MR. In acute severe MR that is there is increased LA pressure there is prominent V wave. Whereas in chronic severe mitral regurgitation V wave is less prominent. And the rapid Y descent in mitral regurgitation is due to distended left atrial emptying. Now palpatory finding. In mitral stenosis there is enlarged right ventricular tap at the left sternal border and there is a diastolic thrill at the apex. Whereas in mitral regurgitation there is enlarged left ventricle, a systolic thrill at the apex and the apex beat is displaced laterally and downwards. So the difference in palpation between the mitral stenosis and regurgitation is that there is in stenosis there is enlarged RV tap whereas in regurgitation there is enlarged left ventricle and the diastolic thrill in the mitral stenosis systolic thrill in the mitral regurgitation and apex beat of course displaced laterally and downwards in mitral regurgitation. Now auscultatory differences between mitral stenosis and regurgitation. First heart sounds. In mitral stenosis first heart sound and pulmonary sound are accentuated whereas in mitral regurgitation first heart sound is absent or soft. So first heart sound increased in mitral stenosis and decreased in mitral regurgitation. In mitral regurgitation the second heart sound there is a physiologic wide splitting. There is a third heart sound in mitral regurgitation and that is due to rapid filling and may be due to tensing of the papillary muscles and valve leaflet and is followed by a mid diastolic rumbling murmur. So in mitral regurgitation S3 is followed by a diastolic murmur and fourth heart sound due to LV enlargement in mitral regurgitation and in acute severe mitral regurgitation S4 is also heard. So in mitral stenosis first sound and pulmonary sounds are accentuated whereas in mitral regurgitation S1 is absent to decrease, S2 is wide splitting, S3 and S4 are also present. Opening snap is present in mitral stenosis and absent in mitral regurgitation. The other condition where opening snap may be present is tricuspid stenosis. Murmur of mitral stenosis is diastolic and is at the apex. The murmur of the mitral regurgitation is systolic but there are variation in the murmurs of the mitral regurgitation. There are three different types of murmurs in mitral regurgitation. Number one the murmur of the mitral regurgitation is classically holosystolic grade 3 to 6 intensity at the apex. It may radiate. Where does it radiate? It radiates to the axilla. If anterior mitral leaflet prolapse or displacement occur and number two it radiates to the base of the heart if posterior mitral leaflet prolapse or displacement occurs. So this is the mitral regurgitation murmur that radiates to the base of the heart if the posterior mitral leaflet is prolapsed or displaced and it radiates to the axilla if anterior mitral leaflet prolapse or displacement occurs. The second murmur occurs in mitral regurgitation in acute severe mitral regurgitation and this occurs due to rapid rise in LA pressure that causes mid systolic decrescendo murmur. And number three, third murmur, as I already told earlier, it occurs after the 
third heart sound a diastolic rumbling murmur now blood flow abnormalities in mitral stenosis and regurgitation in mitral stenosis there is obstruction to blood flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle whereas in mitral regurgitation blood leaks back from left ventricle to the left atrium when it contracts so the obstruction to flow in ms from la to lv left ventricle and in mitral regurgitation blood flow leaks back from left ventricle to the left atrium the disease process both mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation result from rheumatic fever but there are other conditions that may cause both mitral stenosis and regurgitation mitral stenosis is a pure chronic condition whereas mitral regurgitation may also be an acute condition that may occur in acute myocardial infarction and during the angina pectoris chronic mitral regurgitation also occurs in healed myocardial infarction and ischemic cardiomyopathy so what happens in mitral stenosis the leaflet fibrosis occur and there are calcific deposits cordy tendon fuse and shorten calcification in the mitral stenosis immobilizes the leaflet. Leaflet. The mitral regurgitation may be due to abnormalities in leaflet, cordy tendony, papillary muscle, myocardium and the surrounding structures. As I earlier mentioned, acute mitral regurgitation may occur in acute myocardial infarction due to and why does it occur? It occurs due to posterior medial papillary muscle rupture. Why? because this posterior medial papillary muscle has a single blood vessel that supplies this muscle number 2 transient mitral regurgitation may occur during ischemia and angina pectoris now the differences in the severity of the disease process severity of the mitral stenosis depends on the decrease in size of the orifice it may be mild when the size is from 1.5 to 2.5 square centimeter moderate when the size is 1 to 1.5 square centimeter. centimeter and severe mitral stenosis when the size is less than 1 square centimeter whereas the severity in mitral regurgitation depends on the amount of the blood that regurgitates back into the left atrium in the mild form less than 30 ml regurgitates in moderate form 30 to 60 ml of blood regurgitate and in severe forms more than 60 ml blood regurgitate into the left atrium from the left ventricle now the differences in cardiac output in moderate mitral stenosis cardiac output is normal at rest but subnormal during the exercise whereas in severe mitral stenosis cardiac output is subnormal at rest also and what happens in mitral regurgitation that initially there is a decrease in size size of the left ventricle there is decrease is emptying and tension and that is followed by increase the left ventricular volume decrease left ventricular contractility and dilatation that leads to decreased output abnormalities in cardiac chambers in mitral stenosis three cardiac chambers are affected left atrium right atrium and right ventricle the left ventricular ejection fraction and the pressure remains normal in mitral stenosis so what happens in the other three chambers in the left atrium there is an increase pressure that causes dyspnea and then orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea in severe conditions number 2 causes hemoptysis due to rupture of the pulmonary bronchial venous connection and number 3 thrombi that originates in the left atrium in mitral stenosis the incidence of emboli is 10 to 20% more in atrial fibrillation in severe mitral stenosis left atrial pressure of 25 mm of mercury is required for the normal cardiac output to occur now mitral regurgitation why there is a rise in left atrial and pulmonary pressure the left atrial and pulmonary pressures are different in acute mitral regurgitation and chronic mitral regurgitation in acute severe mitral regurgitation there is marked rise in la and pulmonary pressure and that occur because of the regurgitation of blood into the normal sized left atrium so in acute mitral regurgitation the size of the left atrium is normal and pulmonary edema is common in acute mitral regurgitation whereas in chronic mitral regurgitation there is marked 
LA enlargement but without increase in LA and pulmonary pressure. So LA and pulmonary pressure increases in acute mitral regurgitation but it does not increase in chronic mitral regurgitation but there is marked enlargement of the left atrium in this condition and there occurred dyspnea, orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, right heart failure, liver enlargement, distended neck pain, ascites and peripheral edema. What happens when left atrium is enlarged in mitral regurgitation? The left atrial enlargement pulls the mitral leaflet away from the mitral orifice and also left ventricular dilatation and enlargement causes. Causes what? Causes caudal rupture thus increasing mitral regurgitation. Now the effects on pulmonary circuit. In mitral stenosis, number one, there is rupture of pulmonary bronchial venous connection that leads to hemoptysis. Number two, there is RV enlargement in MS, there is secondary tricuspid regurgitation, pulmonic regurgitation and right heart failure. And number three, in mitral stenosis, there is fibrous thickening of the pulmonary capillaries that decreases the pulmonary compliance and lung function. Whereas in mitral regurgitation, acute pulmonary edema is common with acute severe mitral regurgitation and there is increased in left atrial and pulmonary pulmonary pressure, right atrial enlargement in severe pulmonary hypertension. Now EKG finding or differences in the mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation. We have separate videos on the characters of P waves in different cardiac chamber enlargements. For details please uh, watch them. I will go through briefly here because otherwise the video will become very large. P wave changes in the EKG in mitral stenosis there is left atrial enlargement and in that there is tall peak p wave in long lead 2 and p wave is upright in lead v1 in right atrial enlargement pulmonary hypertension and tricuspid stenosis complications so these are the findings of p wave changes in mitral stenosis left atrial enlarged with tall peak t wave in long lead 2 and upright in v1 in ra enlargement pulmonary hypertension and the p wave changes in mitral regurgitation are that there is an enlarged left atrium enlarged right atrium in pulmonary hypertension there may be atrial fibrillation in chronic severe mitral regurgitation and atrial fibrillation occurs once left atrium dilates. Now Q wave features. In mitral stenosis there is right ventricular enlargement whereas in mitral regurgitation there is enlarged right and left ventricle. So in mitral stenosis right ventricular enlargement and mitral regurgitation both ventricles are enlarged. The x-ray features in mitral stenosis earliest change is straightening of the upper left cardiac border on x-ray chest. There is pulmonary artery dilatation and posterior displacement of the esophagus by an enlarged left atrium. Curly bead lines mainly in the middle and lower zones due to lymphatic edema when left atrial pressure is more than 20 millimeters of mercury. And in mitral regurgitation there is left atrial and left ventricular enlargement can be seen. Left atrial forming the right border of the heart. There is pulmonary congestion and interstitial edema, curly's bead lines and pulmonary edema.